this first the group of, of techniques for, for doing niche models are the simplest ones. Actually, the first one was developed, the, the first one is Biopine, and was developed back in the late 70s. And the first paper of this is from the mid 80s. So it's not a, like a novel method, method but it is a, it is very, still very useful. Many people in the world uh, use, use biotime on a regular basis. And, and it's, it's a very neat idea, a very neat implementation. It, it is very, very simple. Imagine we have one of our environmental variables. In, of course, in environmental space, and we have the distribution of our sampling of our calibration data across this, this variable. This method only builds uh, these envelopes or, or these bounding boxes around the, the, the calibration points in each one of, of our multi-dimensional variable space. So this is on one of the variables, we have another variable, we have the same set of points in this other variable and uh, builds this bounding box in each one of the dimensions and in this way it constructs this envelope which represents the, the niche of the species. Then it projects this uh, envelope to the geographic space and produces this potential distribution map. As you can see, it's very simple. Then, uh, obviously, this, this method, in this, in this way, could be very, could be strongly affect, affected by outliers. So, to avoid the negative effect of, of, of outliers, to, to build these huge uh, bounding boxes. They uh, chunk the edges of, of these bounding boxes by percentages or, or using standard deviations of some criteria on, on, on how to, to chunk the tails of, of, of these cores. And uh, you, you, you get your, your angle. This is, this is it. This is the easiest and the most uh, simplest uh, method, biotech. And uh, after this, after this development, there has been tens of methods that have been developed, as Richard mentioned. And uh, this biotech and uh, all the other uh, distance me methods use presence only data. So they are not affected by these uh, situations that Tan was pointing out of, of selecting any kind. Then there is a set, a, a group of, of methods that are, are, are um, developed based on, on, on measuring distances in the environmental space, multi-dimensional multi uh, distances in environmental space. For example, this is the, the Euclidean distance in which it calculates the distance in... You have the, your, your, your group of, of uh, calibrated points in environmental space. I don't find the point of view. here in blue, and it's basically a classification method. It estimates some uh, measurements of, of central tendency, like the mean and standard deviations, and uh, based on, on these measurements, calculates the distance of each one of the pixels in the post of the region to see which one of these pixels belong to the group of of, of pixels within these uh, uh, standard deviation areas. And 
projects again the map, the, the niche model of the, of the geography and produces the map. There are several ways of measuring distances in, in environmental space or in the multidimensional space. This is one of them. This is another one, the Mahalama distance, which is um, particularly useful when you have collinearity among the variables because it, it, it is calculated based on the correlation matrix among variables. So the shape of the of the environmental space is different, it's more like an ellipsoid, a elongated ellipsoid. Mm -hmm. So in this case, for example, the distance of this of this point to the mean is closer than this point to the mean because of this uh, shape produced by the collinearity of the variables. But it's, it's exactly the same idea. And there are other methods, distance methods, like the one that, that Richard mentioned, the Garber matrix, which is based on calculations of mechanical distances. This is a comparison between a Euclidean distance between two points. This is one point, this is another point. The Euclidean distance would be a, 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 a line joining the points, and the, Man the Manhattan distance follows a series of rules that uh, you need to go uh, following squares to measure the distance. And there is another uh, metric of, of distance called the Chevalier che shape which the rule of, of measuring distances is by, by like in, in, the, in chess, the movements of the king, you know, they could be uh, lateral or diagonal. That's, that's the way it works. But these all methods are based on the same principle of measuring distances in the, in the equal any questions about this? No questions? Excuse me. Yes. I'm asking the same as the first uh, one. You said the first uh, method of calculation of using this model is bioclean and distance based approach. And you've also gone ahead and also shown the use in Syria distances. I think the second one, or this is the second one at the distance, I'm not understanding the one. But we have to push again. I'm asking the first uh, methodology of uh, determining the needs method when something is a bio, bio clean and distance based approach. And I've also gone ahead and shown us another two. You, you did this digging distance and uh, the other one, map, much of it is. Is it the same thing or uh, it's another distance? So Enrique is, is going to demo for you all uh, BioClin, which is simply a set-based approach, simply those, those limits along each dimension. And then the other was distance-based approaches. He's showing you several different distances. Essentially, how do I measure the distance from here to there in an environmental space is a pretty complex question. And so it could be Euclidean, it could be Mahalanobis, it could be Gower distances, different types of distances, but it all comes down to a class of approaches. So it's biotech versus all of these distance-based approaches. The nice thing is they're all on the same platform. They're all in open model. So if you learn one, you can pretty much do all. Yes, uh, we are going to to go through uh, an inch model exercise with the data you have in your USB. So uh, I hope you have installed your open model software in your, your computers because we're going to use it now. At this stage. Simply try to follow along. If you have open model or working, 
great. <coughs> See if you can click along with Enrique. But most important is pay attention to what he's doing. Okay? So if you don't have Open Modeler running, or if you haven't yet figured out where all the files are, pay attention to what he's doing because we're gonna we're gonna work with you guys the way we did yesterday afternoon. This is one of the the platforms of the software or the software that has been developed for, for handling multiple algorithms for, for an inch model, which is one of, of, of its strengths. Uh, it was developed in, in Brazil, like uh, probably 10 years ago. <coughs> and uh, at one point it was kind of abandoned. And now we are retaking Open Modeler to give a new, a new face of, 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 the, of this platform. Sometimes it's, it's a bit in, unstable. It crashes or it doesn't, it doesn't run and you don't find any reason why it's not working. But in general terms, it's a reliable software. You, you can use it normally. You can run it with no problems most of the time. So we are going to, to do this exercise for you to start getting familiar with this with this platform. Running only one one model for one of the species that you have in your 